Hello, everybody. Welcome. Live with Carla Nicole. So, um, happy Sunday once again. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, so, today is beautiful, actually. Um, we're coming up on spring, so I'm, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that a lot. I'm loving the fact that, you know, um, spring is, is, is quickly approaching. And, um, you know, we are having the joy that we want, which is the beautiful summer, springtime, where we can truly enjoy, enjoy, enjoy um, beautiful weather and get back to not having to wear the winter coats and all that crazy. So I'm ready and uh, ready for this season to uh, start and, and uh, enjoy it. So um, listen, everybody, thank you for being here. Hey, Marcus. Hey, love. Um, well, it's not morning here. It's actually afternoon. We're at noon here, but good morning to you. Um, and I appreciate you sharing it like always. Hey, Charles. Thank you, love, for the compliment. Good morning. Um, welcome, people. So glad to see y'all ch chiming in. Hey, Naj. Welcome. So glad to see y'all this, this beautiful Sunday. So, um, listen, like I said, you know, uh, it's Sunday for those of y'all that don't know me. I am Carla Nicole. I'm a single mother of two. I have a beautiful daughter who is 18, grown and on her own, and I have a handsome son. Um, you guys see him every now and then saying, best kept, my handsome son, uh, Braylon, and um, he's nine. And, you know, so uh, my spiritual, you know, I always tell you what my spiritual mission is. My spiritual mission is to encourage us to enjoy our alone time without feeling like, you know, being alone we have to feel lonely. That is not true. We can be alone and have a fulfilled, beautiful life. It doesn't have to be miserable because we are alone. There's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can achieve. There's a lot of goals we can meet. We, we really need to make sure that we're focusing on our purpose. And in doing, um, doing that, you have to focus on what it is you are here to do while you are on the planet. So you want to make sure, and this is what I tell my kids, especially my, my teenagers, you know, I tell them all the time, you know, know your purpose, know your why. Why are you here? What is the reason you were on the planet? Why? Why are you here? So this is what um, I want to make sure that we focus on today is, um, you know, we can't be upset about the fact that we don't have everything we need because if we're in, not in a relationship, some people feel like, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. But you are enough alone. And you can be even more to yourself if you seek to find your purpose. So that's what we want to focus on today. So um, thanks, Naj, for the compliment. Yay. Hey, yes, Jalil. Welcome. Good afternoon. So glad you're here. Hey, love, talent coach. Love seeing you, love. Appreciate the compliment. Love you guys. So glad you're here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll our sleeves up. Everybody, make sure you guys got your pens. Get your pens and get your pencils and your paper. We're going in today, all right? So I want to talk about something that I think is very essential and important. And uh, it's very often spoke about, but it's not often, I don't think, um, reiterated as we get older, which is our self-esteem, okay? <laughs> you know, we talk about self everything self-loving and all that other stuff we talk about self this self that but self esteem is key now you guys see me on live right you guys see me always bubbly always smiling always happy always full of life and encouragement for you guys but let me tell you something there was a time and you know this you know i'm candid on here i don't i don't candy coat nothing so who you see me as today um there was a time i was broken okay so i don't want you guys to think that you know, oh, well, she's always so happy and bubbly and, and, and smiling all the time. I have my days, okay? I also have my moments. And I have had some issues in my past to where I, um, I was broken. I was very hurt. Um, I had a moment in time where um, I did not feel beautiful. I did not feel um, intelligent. I did not feel accomplished. Um, there was times I, I, I had low confidence and low self-esteem. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you guys back to where I was, what I was feeling at the time when I was feeling low or feeling saddened or feeling like I was essentially doing what I was supposed to be doing. So um, here's the thing. 
Um, at the time, um, I was through a, a failed marriage, and um, I, you know, I had already gotten pretty much beat up um, by the fact that I lost a relationship. But outside of that, you know, I had the moment where I was feeling like, you know, I'm just really not feeling adequate. I'm feeling like, you know, first of all, I thought I wasn't beautiful um, externally. I had a lot of, you know, um, self-esteem issues. I just didn't feel like I could, I could be what I needed to be. And, you know, just all kinds of stuff. You know, the stuff you go through because you go through a failure of some kind, especially when you're talking about a relationship. So I went through that trial. And what I gained from that is I had to literally, what I call it, lay low and reinvent. So what I did was, um, after my failed marriage, and, and I was really upset and really frustrated, um, I decided to um, really start empowering self. So this is key. I want you guys to write that down. Empower self. Yes, baby, Jaleel, I was not happy with me. I had many, many times where I felt so saddened, didn't feel beautiful, felt like I wasn't enough. All those things that you can possibly imagine, um, I felt. So um, when I got to that point, I want you guys to write this down. You must make sure that you look at yourself and begin to find something in you <coughs> that you find beautiful. So um, it took me a while because, you know, um, in the marriage I was in at the time, I, I just wasn't feeling beautiful. I wasn't feeling, um, you know, I always felt like there was a judgment on me for not being at my full potential. And I felt like, well, because I don't have what I should have at this point, because I'm kind of in between, you know, seeking self, seeking purpose, um, but trying to please my mate at the time, I'm trying to do everything to keep him happy rather than focusing on what I need. And, and because of that, I think that was another problem with what I was doing and why I was feeling inadequate. So once I got out of that, I had to, first of all, I had to forgive the, 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 you know, the un understanding of, Hey, you know, um, yeah, you fell short. Yeah. You had some disadvantage and stuff like that. And yeah, you had a failure with your marriage, but that doesn't mean that you have to wear that. So I had to now focus on how do I reinvent myself? So I first had to start to look inwardly and find something to hold on to. So I want you guys to look in yourselves. For those of the, for those of you that are good on your confidence, good on your self-esteem and all that, wonderful. I'm happy for you. But for these people that who have not had that um, newfound love for self, they'll know what I'm talking about. You know, you get to the point where you're like, man, I'm just, I'm dreading being in the skin I'm in. I just don't feel like I'm enough. I don't feel like I can achieve what I need to achieve because I'm just not getting where I need to be. So first of all, you want to write down, improve your confidence. So um, let's talk about that for a second. How do we improve our confidence? First of all, we have to learn how to improve confidence by, okay, um, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find something about myself that's beautiful and original that nobody else has. And what that said is you have to find your originality. So that was one of the things I had to find. First of all, I had to find my voice. I had to find my confidence. I also had to find my self-esteem. And in those things, those three things, it took some time to really get to really get there. Um, and then really, we have to see outside of the physical. You know, I think a lot of times we might have less, especially with us women, we have a tendency to look at every flaw on our bodies as not good enough. Every flaw. I'm talking about it could be a pimple. It could be, you know, my butt's not big enough. It could be, I don't have nice, nice breast. I don't have a flat stomach. I mean, we can go in on, especially women, we can go in on what we don't like about our bodies. So first I had to actually, I had to come in from a external viewpoint. And I had to start appreciating each part of my flaws that I didn't like. So there was like flaws that I didn't care for. I didn't care for this. I didn't care for that. You know, just different things. So I ended up having a conversation with my dad. And he says, you know what? He said, um, there's only going to be one you. He said, there's never going to be another you again. There never has been a you. And there never will be ever again. And when he said that, it just like clicked in me like, 
Hmm. That's something to kind of be proud of, is it not? Okay. Okay. All right. So then I started to feel like, well, you know what? <laughs> there's no other me. So even in my flaws, there's no other like, like me out here. Even if you get cloned, there can't be exactly like you because their experiences and their emotions are not like you. So even if someone comes in and clones you, they can't be you. And I was like, okay, okay, even twins, even triplets that look exactly alike are not alike. So when you understand that, you're like, okay, okay. So I ended up learning how to sit back in my flaws and saying, you know what, I love them. Sitting back in my mistakes and loving them. Sitting back and learning what it is that I went through, even in my trials and tribulations and mistakes, what it is that I went through brought me here to where I'm at. And then it's like overnight, I began to build this confidence, build confidence, build confidence. And then once you get to learning confidence, you have to learn to detach from things that don't assist that thinking. So what that means is if you have people around you that discourage you, um, people that encourage you being negative towards self, they got to go. So in other words, you got to let those type of people that are in your life that aren't encouraging you to be the best you gone because people like that, they would rather keep you negative about self and feeling like you're not enough so that they can continue to have you in the facet that you're in because they don't want to see you grow and be better than you are because now they're intimidated and now they feel like, well, I don't really want to be around her because she thinks she's better and all this other stuff. Do you know where you came from and all that? Some people you got to let go. So I had to end up learning to remove people from my life to lighten my load. And so when I did that, I'm like, man, this is not, this is not as hard as I thought it was. I think it could be, it could be dealt with easier. So um, you want to make sure that you do that. So here's the thing. After you, um, you, learn about that, you then have to think about um, being able to make better decisions okay um and one of the things that i did after i had lost all the confidence and everything i began to read more um and became a real big researcher on how to um better become a better me so a lot of self-help books or books that are encouraging or books that um uh taught me about things that i needed to learn i ended up watching more shows that were self-enhancing so and so like for for instance i would watch you know dr phil or i would watch a yana van zan or oprah and i would watch them and i would study how they would encourage people that were broken and then i was like well how do they do that like what did they learn that got them to the point where they're able to teach yeah jaleel i see you just eating huh so what is it that you do to try to encourage you like how do i how do i get there and then i found out that the best thing you can do when you're broken or feeling insufficient or not feeling enough, help others. So, you know, um, I ended up helping others by um, encouraging them to be the better them. Um, I ended up going into figuring out how do I help others raise the bar for themselves. And when I found out that if I help someone else become better at who they are, I'm actually helping myself. So what happened was I would encourage friends or associates and, and I would see their beauty. And it was almost like because of the fact that I had been broken before and I know what it felt like to be um, not confident or I felt like what it wasn't where, where how it felt to be um, how it felt to be uh, insecure. I decided, okay, so if I'm insecure, I can help someone else that isn't secure in themselves because I was that. So because I'm relatable to speaking on how it felt to not ha not feel like I'm enough, I can help someone else. So I ended up going on this quest personally to encourage other people. So in the process of, of doing that, I ended up becoming inspired to do other works. So my other works was... Let me help people because I, I love being a parent, but I was seeing where parents were making different mistakes or making their different errors 
in their decision making about parenting. Um, they kind of were blurry on how to be a parent versus how to be um, a friend to your child. So I was like, okay, how can I help someone else that is a little bit, you know, on the fence about clarity on how to improve parenting? So I ended up going on this quest of encouraging parents and, and I did a whole series on, you know, parenting and resolving. So again, now I'm telling you, I had had my moment of being um, insufficient and how I changed that was where am I, where am I prosperous? So write that down. Where are you prosperous in your life? And once you see what is it, what are some of my strengths, rather than looking at my weaknesses, it actually helped me because I was like, you know what? I'm strong here. I'm confident here. When I said when I when I would sit back and say, I'm a mom, I would push my shoulders back and, and, and lift my head up and was proud in that. I'm 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 a mom, but I'm not just a mom, I'm a great mom. And I, and I have a certain standard as being a mother, what I expect from my kids. And I have certain expectations of what I expect from me. So what is it I can give my kids? You feel what I'm saying? What can I give my kids to make sure that my children will be um, on this planet and efficient in themselves? So when I found out, ooh, I'm actually good at parenting. Let me see what I can do to help other people. So now... Now this is this is the key. Now I want you to write this down. The 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 most inevitable thing you can do when you are feeling inadequate is finding something that you are really profound in. And it doesn't have to be something major. It can be something minor that you think is minor. But you would be amazed at something that other people may look down on and find out, "Ooh, you know what? <laughs> I can learn something from that." So, I ended up changing how I felt about me. First of all, I had to get over speaking to other people in front of people because I, I was a little shy. And I was like, ooh, I'm a little shy about, you know, talking to people. And, and so what I did was I would be around people that would be able to speak to people and they had this level of confidence and they, they weren't embarrassed. They were able to articulate how they felt. And I was so impressed with that. Like, how do they do that? How do they do that? Not to become them but to become the best me by doing certain things and being comfortable and confident in what I know I'm good at. So this is how, this is how you kill the, the negativity in your life. This is how you uplift your own self-esteem by saying, ooh, you know what, I'm good at this. And because I'm good at this, I can go ahead and uplift other people. Yes, Jalil, we gotta live now. So. I wanted to share this with you because I think that it's imperative that some people will look at me and see me always smiling and always uplifted and stuff, but I had moments of being broken. I can't be, I couldn't be here without going through that because had I not had that experience with being broken or being hurt or being, or feeling like inadequate or not feeling enough, I can't speak to it. You know what I'm saying? So when you feel like I'm not enough now, don't feel like that's the that's the end all to be all. You want to take that information and how you feel and you want to switch it. It's almost like a light switch. When you figure out, ooh, I can be better. I can do better. I can encourage. You will find out, ooh, okay, you know what? You're right. I do have a success in my life of some kind. See, one of the things we fail to realize, and I say this often, we don't celebrate enough. We don't celebrate enough. We don't celebrate. Every day is a beauty. Every day should be a celebration. Every day should be something that we learn. And you know, people say it all the time. You should learn something new every day. True. But outside of that, you need to be celebrating something in your day. Something. I don't care what it is. Celebrate. We don't celebrate enough. Which means we need to celebrate self. What is it you're good at? It could be knitting. It could be cooking. It could be... I don't know, any kind of thing. It could be doing makeup. It could be counseling others. It could be so many things that you're missing because you're only focusing on what you don't have. So you got to flip that and think about what you're good at and what you do have. All right. I hope I'm helping you guys today because this is very, I'm being very candid here. And I don't want you guys to think for a half a second that I haven't had times or moments of feeling like inadequate because I have had those times. And I've learned over, over the, I mean, over the course of the years, 
I've learned, you know what? We have to get past feeling like we are not enough. Self-esteem is not hard to attain. Here's the other thing I want you guys to understand. We have to start finding our own internal beauty. How do we find our beauty? Is by saying, you know what? We have so many beautiful things in our lifetime that we can really sit down and look at and say, you know what? I have this. I acquire this. Whatever that this is. For instance, um, I have a compassion for people. Naturally. So it's something that I care about people. So when I figure out a way to say I care about I care about you or I care about someone else, it changes the game because we find ourselves like, OK, caring about someone is not often um, I consider sometimes not often uh, a, 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 basically we don't have a big, huge uh, celebration for because sometimes you can care about people to a fault and you're caring about people and they don't care about you. But that's a whole nother series. But anyway, but anyway, when you sit down and you really look at it and you say, you know, I do have a talent of some type, some type and you begin to see things for what it is and you stop bearing yourself a weight that it's not enough. You're not enough because you don't feel adequate. You will find yourself in between a rock and a hard place. So I want you to write this down. One of the best things about confidence is you have to be be mindful that there's a difference between being conceited versus being confident. Conceit means that you are all about what you look like. I look so good. I no man is going to not see that I am fine. No man is going to, you know, all of that. That's just being ridiculous. That's going too far. Self-confidence is when you're like I am. I'm talking about internally and externally, I am confident that I have something to offer people. Not just about men or women, but just period, across the board. I have something on the planet to offer. When you get to that headspace and you understand, ooh, I have something to offer someone else. Because I'm here makes a huge difference because it's outside of what we look like. I think it's important that we understand now i don't want you guys to think for half a, a second that i'm not encouraging you to fix up for life because i tell people all the time show up and fix up so what that means is make sure when you are presentable to people you are presentable you're not just going there with just looking like anything so you do want to have self-confidence which means you do want to make sure you show up at your best but i'm not saying just because you look the part and you're looking nice and you and and you're carrying yourself properly that doesn't mean that you're better than somebody does that make sense to you that doesn't mean that oh i'm better looking than her and i'm this that and the other that it's it's beyond that confidence comes from a knowledge of self that you are in, period and like you said Jalil you can be selfish let me tell you something a lot of times we don't realize that in our selfishness is good because we have to, um, what I saw that Ayanna Levan Zad said one time, and I thought this was powerful. She said, we have to be self full. So what she basically says is you are the representation of what God is in your life. So what that means is how you treat yourself is how you treat your God in your life. So if you're not taking care of you, but you're taking care of everybody else, but you're not taking care of yourself, you're you're actually doing yourself a disservice because you're not taking care of you, which is the real representation of what God is in your life. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's very good. That's why I love that woman. But that's really powerful because if you think about it, we can do a lot for others and just deplete ourselves. That's not right. That's not what we're supposed to do. And in depletion of self, our confidence fades because we don't see, man, I'm doing all this. I'm overexerting. I'm doing everything to please other people and I'm depleting myself. Remember, I said originally when I was going through my own my own storm, I call it. I was so busy trying to please my ex and trying to please him and making sure he was happy that I was not looking to, to make sure hey, are you enough to yourself? Are you sufficient in you? I mean, yeah, you know, you're doing too much here. You're making sure that he's good. 
but you're depleting you because you're trying to make sure he's good. But let me tell you something. When you come into a relationship, you know, y'all love relationships, right? If you come into a relationship depleted in self because you don't feel like, and I said this recently in a, in a post, you don't feel like you deserve certain things. That's because your self-esteem is too low. Listen to me now. I want you to write this down. When your self-esteem is so low and you get someone that really is the equivalent of what you are, but you don't believe it because your esteem is too low, you will find yourself self-sabotaging that relationship. Why? Because that relationship to you and your, and your mind is really grandiose, way more valuable than who you are. And that's not what you want. You want to make sure that when you are in a relationship, you are deserving of it. That is something that you can be selfish about. Because, hey, no, I, I deserve a certain amount of treatment, care, care for me. Why? Because I care for me. I have a certain level of care for myself. So if I care about me, I'm not going to be with a dude that don't care about himself, let alone shows me that he doesn't care about me either. That doesn't make any sense, nor does it go hand to hand together. So we have to look at these things. We have to see how important self-esteem trickles down into every other facet of your life. And how you feel about you is, key, is a key element of how you can encourage other people. Doing service for others and helping, encouraging others is a beautiful thing. But what good am I to do that if I'm not really sure about how I feel about myself? So these are key elements that I want you guys to keep track of. Track of. It's very important that we get away from being so bogged down with how we can how we can please this one and please that one and make sure this one's good and then in the in the midst of all of that we're miserable and we're not enough to ourselves. You can be more than what you are to yourself once you start to learn, oh, there are some there are things about me that I'm failing to remember because we're we're not looking at what is it that we're good at? So, once you find that out. Now, here's what here's where everything kind of really shifted for me. <clears throat> I went into, um, like I said, working on um, encouraging parents and things of that nature. Then I was working towards how do I heal people that deals with jealousy. Because I had my own issues with jealousy. Um, and so I, I created these different these different platforms. So I created... Jealousy Resolution Corner, which is a page of mine. You guys can go on there and, and, and like that today if you want. I have Parenting Resolution Corner, which I created to teach people about parenting. I created the Red Flag Program, which is to encourage youth about the red flags to notice when it comes to domestic violence. I had created, okay? So once you find that light in you, you find yourself overly working. I wasn't really sleeping, to be honest. I would be up at like 3, 4 in the morning writing, figuring out how can I craft certain things that I can do for other people. Now, when I was doing that, I was building what? My self-esteem. How was I building my self-esteem? Because I began to find out, ooh, I do have a level of confidence. I do have a level of understanding for self. And I'm, I'm understanding that I can be somebody. I don't have to be a humdrum or mediocre. I can be somebody. And I can be somebody that's way beyond what I thought I was born to do. And I didn't realize it until I started writing and doing poetry and doing all kinds of stuff. You want to see my page? It's Poetry by Mystery. I do, I do poetry also. I mean, I do a lot of things now because I did what? I replenished back the self-love for myself. When you find out, you know, your own personal beauty... I don't care if you're a male or a female. We, uh, we both have a sense of beauty. Men have beauty and women as well. When, once you find that beauty, let me tell you something about the power of you finding out your beauty. You won't settle for nothing less. You will not settle for nothing less. You will not, a matter of fact, one of the things that I learned about finding my self-esteem is that I refuse to ponder on oh is he here is he not am i in a relationship am i not is he gonna care about me is he not i found that once i got to the point
point of, eh, if a man wants to be here, he will be here. But whether he's here or whether he's not, I'm just fine. I've learned to detach from being so overly concerned about what other people are doing and focusing more on me. I don't compete with nobody. I don't spend my time trying to compete with this one and that one and who's this, who's doing that and who's doing this. No, what I do is I take from different things that I learn because I still am learning. I'm still researching. I'm still loving other people's works. I still love to come on here and talk to you guys and you pour into me. All of that stuff helps me to be more sharper on what I need to be doing rather than trying to compete with this one and compete with that one. And how come they're doing this and why are they doing that? No. I learned to focus on learning about how to be about how do I encourage myself to continue on doing what, what I'm doing. This I don't get paid for. Live with Carla Nicole is a vision of mine. I am going to become what I set what I set out to do, which is I want to have this to be a sitcom programming. But I'm not waiting for somebody else to do it. I'm laboring on my own stuff. I've decided I'm going to create Live with Carla Nicole, whether other people see it or not. That's that's my demand on myself. I'm not trying to ask anybody to give me nothing because nobody owes me nothing. So when you get to this point in your life and you understand there's nobody else out here that's going to work on you, on your projects, on your stuff harder than you, you got to learn that. And when I understood that, I'm like, okay. But I had to have self-esteem and self-confidence to be like, no, I'm going to put my own show on with the with what I have by myself. I don't need nobody else. I'm going to create this on my own. <laughs> You're silly, Jaleel. So we have to get back to what is it that we want to do? What is it that we want to accomplish? What do we have to give? And just like I said, when I learned that it's not a competition about this one or that one, the competition is with me. So my last best, what was my last best that I did last time? What did I do the best before? I really like this. I succeeded here. So how do I beat that? That's what I compete against. Not against nobody else. Matter of fact, the people that are doing it, I support them. I watch them. I study them. I research them. Then I, I support them. I support them because I'm like, you know what? They have come from a whole different, you know, nobody's given nothing. So at the end of the day, unless you are, you know, inherently getting something, I get that. But my nine times out of 10, people are working hard to get where they're at and I'm not no different. So I had to learn, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own show. And that's why we have live with Carla, Carla Nicole every Sunday at noon, because I, it's something I wanted to create on my own. And so that's what, that's what I decided to do because it was empowered for me, not for nobody else. And, and not to mention, you know, when you find your um, desires or passions, don't believe someone else owes you anything because they don't. And don't think that just because you don't have an opportunity or you're not in this area or this person hasn't seen you or all that kind of stuff. Don't let that stop your vision of what you're trying to do. And that, again, is another way to increase your self-esteem. Your self-esteem comes from the inner you. How do you talk to yourself? How do you encourage yourself? You know, one of the beautiful things that I find, and I go through my Facebook timeline all the time, and I'll see women or gentlemen that have a confidence about themselves, and it just ra it's, it's radiant. You see it on them. They're, they're confident in knowing I am enough. And when you see that mm -hmm. and you see that, is so powerful that is a beauty in and of itself men have beauty too i keep saying that beauty is, is is unisex it doesn't matter if it's a male or female we don't call men beautiful but a lot of men that are in their purpose and doing what they need to do are beautiful men so we need to also encourage them as well because men have a tendency to not see their own beauty but they have a beauty as well it's like man okay you're doing your purpose and i can see that in you and when you see their confidence, their shoulders are back. They're confident about who they are. There's nothing more powerful or, or beautiful than that. 
I like what you said, Jaleel. You said, I don't think we ever spoke with each other. You must have been married back then. You're so silly. Uh, but again, no, I don't think you saw me then because I wasn't even on social. I was on social media, but I wasn't really on social media, Jaleel, like that, like I am now. So we probably didn't know each other at the time. But you, you find that it's, it's important that once we get to, to the space and once you find out you don't allow anyone or anything to take over any importance more than what you take of yourself. Write that down. Nothing, no one, should come before or higher than the importance you have for you. Because when that happens, they have a power over you. And then their judgment or what they say impacts you more than you can imagine. When someone is negative or someone is, is abusive towards you, you will find that they are abusive because they have power over you. We have to advance past the power of someone else by saying, you know what? I will detach. I will detach in a heartbeat from someone <clears throat> that does not encourage me, that does not have a good space with me, <coughs> or does not really truly have an honor for who I am. Because it's unacceptable. <coughs> Excuse me. It's unacceptable. <coughs> I have a cough here. So you want to make sure that you never allow anyone or anything to be grander or more important than the love and value that you have. For you. It's really important that you don't do that. All right. So I went over a little bit, but I still wanted to tell everybody I'm glad you guys were here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, please make sure you share this video because this video is to encourage people about their self-esteem. It's powerful. Once you find it, once you begin walking in it, once you learn your purpose, once you feel like I can, I have something to offer the planet, there's nothing, there's nothing more gratifying. I don't care what kind of car you have. I don't care what kind of house you have. I don't care what kind of money you have in your, in your bank account. If you don't have self-esteem... If you don't have self-confidence, if you don't have anything that really will um, encourage you to be who you are, it costs you too much. I will not let anything take away from my peace. I don't care who it is or what it is. If it's not take, if, it, if it's going against my peace, it's got to go because of my self-esteem. I now do not allow anything or anyone to come into my life and and you know disrupt that. And you got to be about that or you will find yourself miserable. All right. This show is already over. I tell you, it went so fast, but I'm so glad you guys were here. Jaleel, thanks so much for being such a, such a voice on this live. It made my day. Um, but like I said, everybody share this video. Um, anybody that knows me knows they can come in and, and, and join my group, which is live with Carla Nicole. If you're not a part of that group now, please go on and join that group because they get actually a little more of me. I come on their live. I give writings. I do all kinds of stuff. So you might find a little more about me by joining that, um, joining that show. You know, it's very important that you can do that. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it's so powerful. Once you gain your, your confidence, once you gain who you are and once you know without questioning, um, what it is, because it's so important. Um, yeah, you're talking about my son. <laughs> I'm sure he is. He's always like, mom, the time. So, um, again, everybody make sure you share this video. Um, and, and encourage other people to not give up on who they are. You know, without this life, you know, um, you're not here anymore. So we want to make sure we encourage others. Um, and that has more power than you can ever imagine. All right. So um, I thank everybody for being here. All right. So uh, don't forget to share this. And don't forget to take your notes down. And if you got to watch this again, go ahead because that's what I wrote. That's what I have it for. So I thank you guys so much for being here. It's Carla Nicole signing off. Best kept. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.